So I was, I'm sure I was doing something that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, and he got really angry where I was like, whoa, I've never seen that. And he came back and with tears just apologized and said, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done this. How do you fight that tendency towards workaholism and preserve that time with your family? How do you do that, especially as a church planner? Yeah, uh, two things. One is Sabbath, I mean, and really uh, taking a Sabbath rest. Um, I think uh, I, I, I take a 24 hour Sabbath where it's not on Sundays. Um, it's a midweek day mm -hmm. and say, this is, this is mine. And I definitely do a lot more with my kids on that day. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing I do is I try to, since weekends are so fraught, right? Um, a lot of traditional families have sometimes Saturday and Sunday off. Um, I think pastors and pastors' kids don't have a traditional weekend. Mm -hmm. And therefore I know that. And I've actually tried to add up all the day, the days of the weekend that my kids are missing me. And then I try to on um, holidays, take more concerted efforts to, to be around them all the time. And I've had that conversation with them where I said, I say, girls, I know I'm not around as much as you'd want me to be on the weekends, but we're gonna go away on this date and we're gonna do uh, spring break on this date and we're gonna do these things and I'm gonna be 100% um, there for you in those spaces. And we do do, good, we do do a good job of that, of going away, both for my own mm -hmm. rest and I need that just to unplug, but then to be with them and to give them all the focus at that time. Have you found a way to uh, separate how they hear you on Sunday from the pulpit versus the dad voice? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I think at different times, at least I'm looking at my own experience, I think you hear different things. Because one of the hard things is for pastors is uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. And you, you, know, you, you preach one thing and then the, they, see you, they see you afterwards. Which is why uh, when parents are struggling, the, bit, the advice I give them the most is I say you need the way that you will most show the gospel, the way that you'll most show uh, your faith. It's not in telling the precepts. They hear that on Sundays. It's not in, um, and you, you should, you should tell them the precepts. You should teach them the, the catechisms. You should teach them the Lord's Prayer. You should teach them these things. But the thing that will be the most impactful will be the way that you forgive and repent. A, to your spouse um, and, and B, to, to them. Um, I definitely remember in college kind of looking around going, what do I really believe? Because uh, I had the mental faculties now to actually process that. And I saw the world, the world doesn't forgive and repent. The world cancels. The yeah. world says, you hurt me, you're out. Um, or you're, f oh, I, you're doing something for me, you're in. So it's a transactional relationship. But what you see in forgiving and repenting, you're seeing somebody owning their what they've done to you, not, not minimizing it, not pretending that it didn't happen, but saying, I did this, please forgive me. And then when the other person says, I forgive you, um, I, as a child, and now hopefully, hopefully for my children, they're seeing there's something different here. There's something supernatural that the world doesn't do and doesn't have the resources to do, but because you've been forgiven, because you know, Jesus has done what he says he's done in your life, you can now turn around to each other and do the same thing. That's where I, there was a marked difference that was, for me, it brought a curiosity of saying, what's this really about? When I, when it, when I was ready to make that decision of no longer where does the, you know, the family faith end and mine begin, mm -hmm. but now I wanna actually um, explore it for myself because there's something here, because what led them to be able to forgive and repent? What's gonna let me be able to do this? And, and Christianity has all those answers built into it. Was there a time when one of your folks came to you and had to seek your forgiveness that sticks out? Oh, not one off the top of my head, uh, but there is, um, I, I, well, maybe the one that is most memorable is um, uh, my father's not a very, does not get angry very much. Uh, it's just not his personality. But there was one time, I think when I was in, um, it's before high school, so I must have been, we had moved to New York, so I was eight, nine, or 10, 11, somewhere in that. And he got really, really angry. I, I, I was doing something. I was, I'm a middle child. So for all you people who believe in birth order, 
<laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, you, can read, you can read me through that lens. And um, so I was, I'm sure I was doing something that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, and he got really angry where I was like, whoa, I've never seen that. And he came back and with tears just apologized and said, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done this. Please forgive me. I was like, oh, Daddy. And what's fun about kids is kids always are like, don't worry, Daddy. Because um, safety is so important to them to see that they see safety again. Um, but now as a father who's had, who's had to do that as well, it just, in some ways you almost discount your kid when they do forgive you because you're like, well, you have to, or they don't know any better, but they, they do it so quickly and so easily. Um, but it was, it meant more that he did that. And I'm, I'm hoping that when I do it, they see that and, uh, yeah. you know, see something special there. Hey Pastor, thanks for watching this video. The Focus Pastor is here to encourage you, your family, and the church. So if you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or check out our website.